moving back with the composition of functions. In this particular video, we'll deal with how to create a new function by composition of functions, evaluate composite functions, find the domain of composite functions, and decompose a composite function into its components that created the composite function. So let's take a look at this first one here. It says, let f of x equal x squared, g of x is equal to x minus 3. Determine the composition of functions, f and g, and the domain of each composition. All right, so let's start with, first off, when we see this here, we know that this means I'm going to take f of g of x. So let's go ahead and rewrite this in a form that may be a little bit easier for us. So we're going to do f of g of x. So now that means I'm going to take function g, and I'm going to substitute it into function f. So in other words, I have f of x minus 3, which is then, in parentheses, x minus 3 squared. So I'm going to end up with x squared minus 6x plus 9. So now let's take a look at the values that we would have and if we have any restrictions. So the domain of this function g would be all real numbers. The domain of function f would be all real numbers. So I don't have any problems. Like There's no value of x here that will not be allowed to be substituted into here. So for our domain, it is the set of all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Scroll down to the bottom one, and this is the same idea. I'm just literally taking whatever f of x is, and I'm going to substitute that into function g. So in this case, we have um, g of, well, f of x is x squared, g of x squared. So I'm just going to now substitute into the function g, x squared, everywhere there's an x. So my final is x squared minus 3. Again, since the domain of function f is all real numbers and the domain of function g is all real numbers, I have no restrictions that I have to worry about moving from one function to the next. So this, again, my domain in this case would be, as well, all real numbers. Okay, so again, just making sure we understand the idea of composite functions. I'm literally taking whatever a function is and dropping it into another function so I can get a resulting function. Let's take a look at this one. Let f of x equal x squared, g of x is x minus 3 again. Determine the composition of f and g. So in other words, I'm going to take the value and substitute it in. So I'm doing f of g of 5. So I need g of 5. So again, f of 5 minus 3, because I'm just taking the information and putting it right into there. So then that means I need f of 2. So now I'm going to substitute 2 into function f. So I get 2 squared, which is 4. So that means f of g of 5 just equals 4. I'm literally just substituting, again, one function into another. All right, so now on this one, I have g of f of 7. So I'm going to substitute 7 into the function for f. So g of 7 squared. So I'm going to get g of 49. I'm going to substitute 49 into function g. So 49 minus 3, which is going to give me 46. So g of f of 7, all just substituting one value into a function, get whatever that output is, substitute it into the other function, 46. All right, so then taking a look at the last one. So looking at this example, right, we've got that. Again, we're going to look for f of g of x. And we know g of x is x squared plus 1. So I want f of x squared plus 1. So I think about the domain of this. We have no restrictions for the domain. So this is defined over all real numbers. Now, though, I need to go ahead and take the square root, because that's what function f is, of x squared plus 1. 
So now I have to think about looking at this domain. This is going to happen when, so it's defined when um, x squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So let's think about that. Let's go through and solve this. x squared has to be greater than or equal to a negative 1. All right, so we should pause and think here. For what values of x will x squared be greater than or equal to 1? Well, no matter what value I put in here, I'm going to square it. So if I put a negative 5 in there, I square it, I'm going to get 25. That's greater than or equal to negative 1. If I put a 2 in there, I'm going to have 2 squared is 4. That's greater than or equal to 1. No matter what value I put in here, it's going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So when we look at this, when we talk about the domain, though, because we said everything's going to be, what I put in for x, everything's going to be greater than negative 1. So therefore, our domain here is negative infinity to positive infinity. The next example, a uh, little bit different, so we just reverse the way that we have this, so I'm taking g of f of x, so that's g of square root of x. So now we're going to take function g, and what I need to do then is say, all right, well, I have um, x squared plus 1. Before I get there, I have to remember that because of this, the square root of x, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. We know that off the bat because of that. So now I'm going to substitute the values in, and I'm going to get, okay, square root of x is going to be squared, and then I'm going to add 1. So that means I'm going to get x plus 1. But we do have a restriction with the domain. This is only going to work, this whole composition is only going to work as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. That's because of the first part that we started here with. All right, so my domain here is restricted to 0. Whoops, that's an error there. I should have that as a bracket, so let's delete that again. Okay, and then back to here. So now we'll put this in correctly. It's allowed to be 0 and it's going to be everything greater than, so dealing with infinity. So again, the idea when dealing with the composition of functions, I have to be careful of if I have restrictions when I start, and if I have a restriction when I start, then I have to make sure I include that restriction. Okay? So it's all about taking a look at each piece. So in this case, I looked at this piece. I had no restrictions. Then I came back to here. I'm going to have to have a restriction on x. But the nice thing was just the way that it happened to be coming out with x squared, that uh, there was no real restriction because x squared is always going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Here, though, we start out with the restriction because square root of x, well, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. When we finished our work here, we were left with just x plus 1, so that's the only restriction that came about. So here's our new domain. Again, thank you for your time. Uh, this is Robert Main, math teacher at Charaho Regional High School. Hopefully this was helpful and help you through your calculus or pre-calculus.